Hi everyone, today I'm going to tell you guys my top 5 reasons of getting this scientific calculator. And this calculator is the Casio FX115ES Plus version. And you can get this calculator for about $13 to $20 depending on where you go. And as you can see from the screenshot here, that's the price I paid for the calculator at Walmart. And if you want to purchase this calculator, make sure you do so before the summer ends because they have the back to school sales. This calculator will definitely take care of you especially if you are taking an algebra class. And now let's get into my top 5 reasons of why you should get this calculator. And now let's go! Let me first show you guys how to reduce a fraction such as 3 over 24 on the calculator. So let's turn on the calculator right here. And then this is the fraction key. So hit that. On the top, we have to enter the 3. So hit that. And then we have to move on to the denominator. To do so, hit the down button right here and then enter 24. After we have the fraction 3 over 24 on the calculator, we just need to press the equal right here. And you'll see that the calculator reduced 3 over 24 to 1 over 8 for us. And you know sometimes the question wants us to have the answer in the decimal form, right? In that case, just press the SD button right here. And you'll see we have 0 0.125 for the answer. And you can go back and forth, back and forth. Real cool, right? And that's pretty much it. And let me show you guys this. If you start off with a decimal, such as 0 0.125, then the calculator can change the decimal to a fraction for you. Let me show you. All we have to do is just press the decimal that we want, 0 0.125, and then press equal, and then we have the fraction. That's all. All right, for the next one, let me ask you guys two questions. We have 0 over 4 and 4 over 0. Take a second, comment down below, and let me know what the answers are. Alright, so you see that 0 over 4 and 4 over 0. One of them is 0, and then the other one is something else, right? Which one's which? Well, let's see. Let's check it with the calculator. So, for 0 over 4, we just have to enter the fraction, and then 0 on the top, over 4 on the bottom, and then we get 0 for the answer. That's it. Pretty easy, right? However, when we have 4 over 0, I think it's a different story, right? So, let's see. 4 on the top, and then 0 on the bottom. And I'm going to hit the equal. Oops, we get math error. What does this mean? This right here should remind you that when we have a fraction, we cannot have a 0 in the denominator. This is why the calculator is telling us we are doing something that's wrong mathematically. That's how we got a math error, right? So the response are 0 over 4 is 0, but then when we have 4 over 0, that's undefined. And that's a situation when we have math error on the calculator. Right next, I'm going to show you guys how to add the fractions up. So we are going to do 1 over 6 plus 4 over 21. And let me just walk you guys through this. So we need to have the first fraction, so just press the fraction key. On the top, we have the 1, and then go down and then press the 6. And then, be sure you have to get out of the denominator. To do so, press the right button. And then, we are doing addition, so press add. And the second fraction, another fraction key. 4 on the top, and then over 21. And press equal, we get the answer. That's it. And I think by showing you guys fractions, you guys want to buy this calculator already, right? This calculator also simplifies square root numbers for you, such as square root 72. Let's take a look at how this works. Very straightforward. Here is a square root key, right? So hit that, and then just enter 72, and press equal, and you'll see this is the exact answer, and most likely this is the things that we'll be doing, right, in the algebra class change square root of 72 into 6 times square root of 2. If you want to have decimal, sure, just press S to D and you get the decimal answer. Alright, so that's pretty much for the first one. And then for the next one, I will show you how we can combine square root numbers. So we just have to enter this right here on the calculator. It's 3, and then we have the square root of 20. And then we are going to add, right? Be sure you get out of the square root. So we have to press the right key and then press the plus and we have the 4 square root of 45. 
And you see, this is the question, and this is what we have to enter on the calculator. They should look exactly the same. And they are exactly the same. Then press the equal sign, and you get the answer. 18 square root 5. Next one. Let's look at this right here. So we have well, we have to have the parentheses. So parentheses, negative 2. Use this as a negative, and then we have the 2. And then we are going to add the square root of 5. So here's a screw, and here's a 5. We have to get out of the square root. So press the right, and then close parentheses, and we have to have the second power. You can use this right here for the square key, or you can use the power key right here, up to you, because the second power, there is a square key right here for you already. So you can do that. And enter 9 minus 4 times square root 5. That's the answer. And I think I have one more for you guys. This one. What's this called? Square root of 2 over 1 plus square root of 8. We have to rationalize the denominator, right? Because square root of 8 is an irrational number. And it's okay because of this calculator. Clear? And then this is the fraction, so we have to enter the fraction key first. And then on the top, we have the square root of 2. And then I have to go down to the denominator. So press right and then go down. And then press 1 plus and then square root of 8. Exactly the same as what the question is. And press equal and you get the answer. 4 minus square root of 2 all over 7. That's the answer. Let's do some exponents. We have two questions right here. The first one is negative 3 square, and the second one is parentheses with negative 3 inside and then square. Do we have the same answer for this or not? Well, let's take a look on the calculator. The first one does not have the parentheses, then don't enter parentheses. Just press negative 3 square, and then hit equal, and we get the answer negative 9. The first answer right here should be negative 9. The second one, we do have this parentheses, so we will open the parentheses first and then put in negative 3. Close parentheses and then hit the second power, so right here. Equal, we have the answer positive 9. As you can see, the parentheses matter, we get two different answers. The first one is negative 9, the other one is positive 9. Next one, let's take a look of 2 to the negative 5 power. What does this mean? Well, let's take a look on the calculator. So the base is 2, and use this for the power key. So press this. This way, you can enter any power that you want. We want to have negative 5 for the power. 2 to the negative 5, press equal, and we get 1 over 32 for the answer. It's crazy, right? But then the calculator can handle it. Let's look at the next one we have. 36 to the 1 half power. We have a fraction in the exponent. Really crazy, right? But then, this calculator can still handle that. So let me show you. 36, power key, and then we need to have 1 half for the power. So press the fraction here, 1 half, 1, and then down, and here we have 2. The answer to that is 6. And then, we are done. Very cool, right? All right, by now, don't you guys want to buy this calculator already? However, I'm going to show you guys more. Let's talk about how we can solve a system of equations like this on the calculator. So this is the place you go. Go to mode and then choose number 5 for equations. And then this is a 2 by 2 system of equations. And you see that we are going to use number 1. Some number times x plus some number times y is equal to some other numbers. So just press 1. And you see that the calculator is asking you for a matrix. And this is how you do it. First, make sure all the x are lined up, all the y's are lined up, all the equal signs are lined up, and all the numbers are lined up. And then, you are just going to write down all the coefficients and all the numbers. And let me show you. We'll get this. For the first row, we will end up with 3, negative 1, because that's a coefficient of y, it's negative 1. And then we have negative 11. And for the second row, we have 1, that's a coefficient of x. And then 2, and then 8. These are the numbers that we have to enter. So let me enter that for you guys. 3, negative 1, and then every time you enter a number, press equal. And then negative 11, and then 1, and then 2. 
and then the last one is 8. And you see, we have entered all these numbers right here. Then, we just have to press equal, and we know x is equal to negative 2. And you can press down right here, y is equal to 5. Once again, x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to 5. That's the answer. Real cool, huh? And I'm going to show you guys more because you know, sometimes when we are solving a system of equations, there are special cases such as this one. So I'm going to go to the equation again, number one. I'm going to just write this down into a matrix for you guys right here. And let me press equal. In this case, we have no solution. There's no solution for this system of equations. The calculator says so, right? All right, another special situation. Let's look at this system of equations and then let's write this into a matrix already, which is this, okay? And then let me just go to equation number five, first one, and then let me enter these numbers right here. this. In this case, once we press equal, we get infinite solutions. And that's what we have right here. Come on, who invented this calculator? This is just like iPhone. It's so smart. And I have one more I want to show you. For the system of equations, sometimes we can also encounter a 3x3 three three situation, right? Such as this one. And then once again, we just have to enter this is the matrix on the calculator first. But then, let me show you where to go first. Go to mode, and then number five for equations. This time, we have x, y, z, right? So we are gonna choose the number two. Sum number x plus sum number y plus sum number z is equal to some other number, so I choose number two. And you have a bigger matrix to enter. All you have to do is line up the x, y's, z's, and numbers, and then write down the coefficients. And this is what we are gonna end up with. And there's no y, okay? It's meant to be an empty space. There's no y, so it's technically zero. Just like all this. Once we press equal, we get the answer. X is equal to one half. Press down. Y is equal to four and z is equal to negative one. So earlier we are in the equation mode, right? And if you just press on, we're all clear or so, you cannot get rid of this mode. What you have to do is go back to mode and then go back to number one, so you can go back to the regular computation. Oh my God, what's this? x squared plus two x minus 15 is equal to zero. This is the quadratic equation, right? And can we still use this calculator to solve that? Yes. Otherwise, why am I still making a video, right? So let me show you where to go. We are still going to go to the mode and then choose number five for equations. This time, we'll select three. Notice that that's the quadratic equation in the standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. And that's the form we have right here as well. Be sure the quadratic equation has to be in the standard form in order for us to use number three right here. So choose three. And then we just have to enter the a, b, c values. A in our case is 1, the number in front of the x squared. b is 2, and c is negative 15. So we just have to enter that. a is 1, b is 2, and then c is negative 15. And then all we have to do is just hit the equal sign. And we see that x1 is 3. That's the first x value for the answer. And then x2 is negative 5. So we have the two answers, right? And if you press down again, it's going to show you the x value for the minimum and it indicates that it's negative 1. y value for the minimum is negative 16. So what does that mean? Let me explain it right here. First, when you have this equation here, if you set this equal to 0, we get these two answers, right? And that represents the x-intercepts of the graph of this equation right here. 3 is right here, and negative 5 is right here for the x-intercept of the graph. 
And then when the calculator shows you the x and the y values of the minimum, you see the negative 1, comma, negative 16. That's the vertex of the parabola. Because the a value is positive, that means the parabola opens up. Therefore, we have a minimum point right here. Okay? So that's pretty much it. And you notice that x squared plus 2x minus 15 is equal to 0. You can solve this equation by factoring, right? What if the equation cannot be solved by factoring? Let's look at this one. And even worse, we have a fraction in this right here, right? Can we still handle that on this calculator? Hopefully we can, right? So we're just going to all clear. You can just press that and then you see that we're going to reset. And then this equation is, is in the standard form already. So we can go ahead for the A value is one third. You can just do one divided by three for one third. I will do that one over three like this. That's for one third. B is negative two. So I press negative two. And then C is negative one. Okay. And then for the one third, you can also use this fraction key if you would like. But then one third is just one divided by three. Anyways, press equal and you see that x is equal to, wow, it's an irrational number. Three plus two, square root of three. And then the next one is three minus two, square root of three. The calculator can handle it, right? And of course, you can press the SD key right here to get decimal answers if you would like. So I can write the answer as x is equal to 3 plus minus 2 square root of 3. And then of course it shows you the vertex right here as well, but that's pretty much the same idea that I demonstrated earlier. And let's look at one more example right here. x squared plus 5x plus 7 is equal to 0. What's so special about this example right here? Well, let's take a look. I'm pretty clear that I'm going to just enter a is equal to 1, b is 5, and c is 7. I know this is not solvable by factoring, but then on the calculator, you see that it gives us the answer, and then we have the i. The answers are complex values, right? Negative 5 over 2 plus square root of 3 over 2 i, and then the next one, you have the negative version right here. And you can put down the answer like this. Negative 5 plus minus, put the i right here first, okay, put the i right here first, and then square root of 3 all over 2 usually put the i before square root numbers. And this is it. Cool, huh? And let me make a similar remark right here, because right now if you press on or press AC or whatsoever, this is still in the quadratic equation mode, right? So be sure you press the mode and go back to number one for the regular computation. Thank you guys for watching and hopefully you guys like the video. If so, please hit the like button and then make sure you subscribe to my channel and then please check out this video for the bonus feature. You can find the links in the description and I also have some more resources for you guys in the descriptions as well. That's it.